We didn't come this far to slow down now. Let 2021 be the year that you light up, that you wake up, that you shake up that special something in your soul, that you reach out and work for that health, that life, that vibrant living you know is possible. Let this be the year. Let this be the day. Let this be the moment that you believe in miracles again. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Devin and I have a very special guest today. This is another one of those conversations that is years in the making. This is a friend. Um, a teacher and a student of mine that I've known since I think 2018-ish um, at the Artful Convention, I think is when it stands out. Um, and there's just people that we meet in life that have this thing, that have this magnetic thing and Jamal's smile and Jamal's heart and Jamal's passion and drive was palpable from the very beginning. We invited him to be one of the speakers in our very first big idea um, and back to the st- or MC actually for the first big idea. And then a speaker at the second, you're one of my favorite humans. And I'm so grateful to have you for the people that don't know you yet. Tell them who you are and what you're up to. Oh man, my fellow human beings, first and foremost, I'm another human being, first and foremost. My name that my molecules respond to and that I've been entrained to is Jamal Frewster. Um, Born and raised in East Hartford, Connecticut. I'm a hybrid human, mom's right from Peru. Dad's born and raised in Easley, South Carolina. I am black and Peruvian, currently uh, finishing up my last few weeks of my doctor of chiropractic program. And I get the honor and privilege to be able to be an exam doc at the Source Chiropractic out here in beautiful Oakland, California. I'm currently a life coach in burnout prevention with doctors and nurses in particular. And I'm just on a a seeking, I'm on a journey and I'm on a expression for for truth and what's right in this world. Ironic and so perfect to hear you express it that way. I've never, I guess, felt it that way of a burnout prevention, right? And we're gonna talk about fire today. So Mm. for, people who might feel fire in their veins like you and I do, that can lead to burnout. So I'm grateful that now they'll have that resource and we'll make sure and get them connected to that. We'll circle so I don't get too far ahead of myself. But the reason, the calling that I had to invite Dr. Jamal to be with us today um, is that we had traded a few conversations around anger, around rage, and something that the tie that binds him and I together from the start is that we're feelers and and most of my chiropractic brothers and sisters are feelers the ones that i resonate and um and end up in circles with are the feelers and that's our superpower and maybe our achilles heel and there's a lot in the world right now and there's a lot within us that can come up as anger and rage and it can be rocket fuel it can be medicine and it can be so profoundly destructive. And so I create this space, this idea of if they knew. So I ask you, Dr. Jamal, what is something or what's a big idea around anger and rage and big feels that you wish more people knew or understood? I'd honestly say it's a blessing. Mm Anger is a blessing, first and foremost, as I love that you highlight. It can be something that you transform into medicine and that you learn to transmute, as I imagine, a lot of anger that people feel now in this day and where it stems from, perhaps from childhood and unmet needs, is that it is a secondary emotion and it can be fuel when you especially align with your purpose and you come from the space of ultimately love as I'm sure that y'all can appreciate, Dr. Devin comes from a massive space of love. She's moving with a divine purpose. I just want to touch on where it helped me stem from as I used a lot of my anger that was unexpressed when I was younger and that I didn't have the, create the channels or the mediums or felt like I deserved to express 
some of my deepest, from my deepest wounds, my deepest past, deepest trauma, we all have our darkness. And even though life happens to us or we perceive that, when you can begin to understand, when you can begin to do the deep work, when you can begin to enter these medicinal spaces and these people and these vibrations, it will shift and allow for an opportunity to understand it happened for you as un, as, hmm, that might not come across honoring or that might trigger some people because there's deep, deep cuts. But I believe it was Rumi, one of the most profound human beings that walked this, this earth was the wound is where the light enters and where the healing can really begin. And when you can understand that in the right space and place, that's when your life can truly transform. Mm. That's it. That's it. And when you get that, when you can grab onto, feel, and begin to move in the world as life is happening for me, not to me, that my darkness, my wound had purpose. And, and it, it is leading me to my purpose and my becoming. It changes everything. But like you said, you don't always feel that or exercise that anger, rage, fear, doubt, sadness, if we're in a reactionary mode, it's a much different outcome. So walk us through before, what's it, what did it look like in your life before you got that, right? Before you had that perspective and you would get triggered by anger or rage or those wounds, how, how has the expression changed? What did it look like? What does it look like now? Great question. So when I was younger, coupled with the wound, there was also bullying. So it came with a lot of isolation. I used to play a lot of video games and I would just be in my own kind of like space and I'd process things. Journey through an athlete, I played soccer, I wrestled. So uh, wrestling in particular, I could, as you can appreciate, there's, it's a violent sport and the guy or the woman, you know, across that line for me because I wrestled some females as well coming through high school. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Almost got caught and almost got pinned by one because she got me a good headlock when I was younger. But hey, uh, it was an expression of my anger. So I was a sprinter D1 at Central Connecticut State University. Shout out to my Blue Devils. Uh, I was able to actually channel my anger into something physical on the track, training with wrestling, with soccer. But there was a lot of like bullying as well. And I didn't know who I was. You know, uh, I got picked on, wasn't black enough for my, my black people, wasn't Hispanic or Latino enough for to speak Spanish and not sound like a, like a gringo or like a white person. So it just led to a lot of disidentity syndrome, which led to more frustration, which led to more anger. So it's this cycle. And man, I learned to develop a sharp tongue and be able to defend myself physically, yes, but if someone insulted me or whatever might have been, or even before people had the opportunity, I would be picking them apart just to prepare myself in case I needed to come out viciously or swear or whatever it might be as a means of defending myself as I understand nonviolent communication, which I'll get into in a second. But my biggest unmet need was safety and community. Mm. I always felt like I was looking from the outside in when I was younger, I can, uh, it's always, it's an anchor for me as I appreciate it now, looking outside my window um, back in my, in my home and seeing some of my neighbors and some of my friends playing, but not feeling included or like, why didn't they invite me? Or I just felt like always from the outside looking in or trying to find my place. And man, as I went through undergrad, that was my first opportunity where I have a new opportunity to connect to all these beautiful people. They don't know my past. They don't know who I am. So that's where the social butterfly kind of nature came into things, which I observed from my mom, who's li the literal freaking sunshine. And then once more at Life University, when I started my doctorate of chiropractic program, I read how to win friends and influence people um, after a successful uh, track career with my, with my brothers and sisters on the track learning a lot with what I uh, experienced there, then applying it to then this whole new world down in Atlanta, Georgia, where again, I have a new opportunity. So appreciating people and understanding a little bit more of them, but what the shifted for the anger was a lot of understanding uh, and acknowledgement. Like I hadn't acknowledged and I had repressed my, my trauma. I had repressed what happened. I hadn't shared with my mom or my dad, my two closest beings, my, my best friends, my sister. I never had expressed it to anybody. So what shifted for me was the acknowledgement and be able to even speak about it and not like trauma or vomiting, not just being like, this is my story. This is my story. This is my story. 
this is what happened to me. However, with Kairos training culture, with Dr. Brett Jones, Dr. Lance Von Stade, giving me a lot of the tools to be seen and to express Dr. Eric Plasker, when I first shared my story at Life Vision after I had some conceptualization of what had happened, then I could understand that I'm not the only one that this happened to. And there are way more individuals that has hap- that this has happened to. And that, I mean, I'm even reminded today, like how that expression unexpressed, the, uh, the emotional, you know, punching bag you know, with individuals around us and the, how it kind of like leaks out. Mm-hmm. I'm reminded of that now. And with the understanding of why it happened a little bit more so and that everything is going according to plan. It is my responsibility, I see, to now heal that. And there's waves and there's patterns and there's hurt and there's a lot of tears and there's a lot of shedding of layers. And it, there's so many different things. However, that's the gift you get to continue to transmute or shift into these spaces and places that you occupy as a leader, as a human being, as a mom or dad, as a family member, whatever it may be. Yeah, growth um, is contraction and expansion, right? Like we go, you know, through, like you said, lots of layers. If you feel comfortable, could you share even just a little bit of the bigness of, you know, I think that's important to, when we talk about anger and rage and big feels, like if you feel open. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm more than comfortable in sharing a little bit about my trauma, but my trauma was that I was molested when I was nine um, at my daycare. And uh, that had a very big impact, you know, on my parents when I first told them. They didn't know what to say, but at the same time, they're like, oh shit, that makes that makes a lot of sense to why I was such an angry kid. Cause my parents, God bless them. Like I am so, so blessed to have my parents, but they did everything and more over time working through sickness to provide for my sister and myself, roof over our heads, food on our plates, all the things. And I was blessed with this wonderful life because they came from poverty and they busted their asses so much so that me and my sister wouldn't have to experience that. So the unexpressed anger and feelings that then anchored in the narratives, the lens, the, 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 I'll say the dirty windshield Mm -hmm. that, that happens it became effort, with effort to begin to cleanse that. But like I said, I felt ostracized sometimes. I just felt like I didn't belong. And then that led, that perpetuated the unmet need of community, of safety. And then the expression of that unmet need was anger. And that came in a lot of the physical. But I say I was blessed to be able to do sports because at least I had a channel. That's not every. That's not everybody. That was right. just my. That was just my expression. I am grateful for your vulnerability and strength, and because um, it where we heal one, we heal so many. Um, in in you being vocal on a on a social platform, right, and calm and collected in in that, and when you talk about basic needs. We're talking, guys, this is science. It's, it's hierarchy of needs is safety, security, your physical health at water, food. And then it is a sense of belonging. And, and, and we see that expressing itself in 2020 and 2021. And and then you start to understand the social dynamic of how we're bumping into each other, because where some person went through a life experience that drives them to wear a mask, someone else went through a life experience that drives them to not want to wear a mask or to vaccinate or to not vaccinate or to feel this way about Black Lives Matter or to feel that way about Black Lives Matter or to feel this way about the host of all of it that has hit the dirty windshield of 2020 and 2021. And this divine timing, as I look at this poster of Dr. Martin Luther King, and it's, it's the one of him standing over a giant crowd at the Washington Monument. I've been so uh, driven to, to understand and get to know him in my lifetime. But I look at it and I go, God, what would it have been like to be alive during that time? And we're living in a time like that right now. Yeah. 
what we're experiencing will redefine everything. And so as, as I hear your story of back then, or I think about all the feels right now, I can, I mean, social media, there's a thousand different things in our personal life or on social media or in our communities that trigger us and get us angry and frustrated. And we get into all these feels. So you've taken us into this, this big idea that it can be transmuted into light, that it can, that we can take these traumas and and use it as a force for good. What are some tools that people going through the triggers of today and dealing with their traumas of yesterday, what tools have served you that might serve the rest of us as we navigate this time? Mm, mm, mm. First question that my friend Marianne blessed me with was, or it's, it's a quote, it's the trigger is the teacher. Mm-hmm. I've seen Ruby Freeman, my leadership guide and savant. Uh, she often asks as well as Brett does, you know, well, why are you being triggered? My brother, Dr. Raymond Nichols, follow, follow these beautiful beings on, on Instagram as uh, they just, they offer a light. So the trigger is the teacher. Why are you being triggered? And when you ask the question why, you are shifting into curiosity. Mm-hmm. Dr. Chris Lee and Dr. Suki Muku, they mm-hmm. often talk about life can become this beautiful dance when you're able to ask why. And if you're able to then understand why am I being triggered by so, such and such to whatever topic it is, you can get curious and then that expands things because when you get triggered, I imagine, you know, nervous system wise, you're vamping into this sympathetic, defensive, vigilant, I need to attack this thing because insert reason that you, you get to discern. And when you can begin to unravel those layers, then you can uh, begin to dive deeper of what's the root cause mm. of this secondary emotion that is anger. And I imagine it's due to unmet need, which leads me to another resource, Dr. Marshall Rosenberg, Nonviolent Communication. It's about a four and a half hour audible. Everybody needs to read this. Literally everybody needs to read this because we are all human beings that revolve around this core nine to 10 neat basic needs that then fuel our existence or what he beautifully says is our unmet needs, our needs are the life that courses within us. And there's this whole other conversation with shame culture and polarization and our current level of communication in America and in the world and especially social media because that's shit's all out of context, right? You don't, you can't appreciate the story. But if you can be curious and really sit in someone else's shoes and ask why and be able to listen and not judge, listen and not project, listen and not assume, another book, uh, the four the four agreements. Oh. Like, oh my goodness, and always try like oh. so good. It's and so good. It's like so short. There's no reason. You know, we all drive a car, put it on your audible. We all like lay in bed at night, play it before you get there's there's no excuse for not picking up timeless resources like how to win friends and influence people and the four agreements and open it's you know if we really want to set the world back in motion um, and heal through this thing, nonviolent communication is going to be a must. And the ability to listen more than we talk, right? I mean, such a loud time. I mean, that's, it kept me from starting a podcast because I was like, God, there's so much, there's so much noise. And, and so I hid from the calling to do this Yet, as I have this conversation, this is the way that you and I can adjust the frequency of the internet. This is my way to transmute dark into light. This is my way of saying it's out there, but there I'm putting light out there. If they're going to give me this avenue, we're going to send some good out into this. So we've got the trigger is the teacher. I love that. Um, And following the curiosity and those series of questions, studying nonviolent communication, anything else that you're like, man, if people, you know, have gone through some stuff or they're super triggered and angry during this time. I invite them to, uh, Mm -hmm. it can look like different modalities, but surround yourself with a community that hears you, that sees you as community is a basic need. And, you know, I got my sister that I'm chopping it up with right now, but Brett, 
Dr. Jordan, Dr. Lance, my brothers of Delta Sigma Chi fraternity, all these different spaces and places are spaces that give me permission mm -hmm. to just feel what I feel, notice what I notice, and be me. If you are in spaces that judge you, that don't allow you to express, that don't allow you to breathe, I imagine that there is an opportunity to then reach out to other communities, people, friends, therapy, Reiki, chiropractic, um, so like any of these different things that allow you to move and express these feelings and it doesn't need to be in isolation, not to confuse with, it is important to integrate then what we feel. But I feel that's a whole nother conversation, but surround yourself with a community and people so that way you can shift from this vigilant, protective, defensive, triggered for good reason. Like I like I want to say just and affirm it all is happening for you. And you were, I'd say you were blessed with this, 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 the stimulus to then transform and then shift back into the parasympathetic relaxed, medicinal, safe space that then is going to permeate into your energy, into your being and into your expression in all shapes and forms and capacities. Mm -hmm. And there's freedom in taking responsibility for your perception. Yes. yes. That if we seek freedom, then we're going to have to, mm, my suggestion is to consider the possibility that yeah. only we hold the key to our freedom. Only mm. we. Um, to our individual and and yeah I love that you pointed out too you know we're not saying to kick dirt over your hurts or to just pretend that it's all sunshine people that see you and I <laughs> um, are typically like god they're so smiley oh my gosh it's so this oh and god. it's like and it's 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 not a, a one lane conversation it's this and that you know, mm -hmm. I thrive in community and I create solo space. I am, mm -hmm. I choose positivity and I allow myself space when I'm in, in it, you know, I'm not afraid to feel it. I just will not permit myself to get stuck in it. That's something really important because people see you and they see myself and they're like, oh, you're just a ball of sunshine. I'm like, yo, you have no idea the war I've had to go on in within myself. You have no idea the effort that it took to get here. And that can be bridged in a conversation, in the curiosity. And it's like, I've been so negative, pissed, angry for such a long time already. It's a no brainer for me to choose or an effort to choose love, happiness, not stuffing things in, but acknowledging. So that's that's something very important that I just want to echo for people. Yeah, and I think the resources alone, this is breadcrumbs, right? Like we could talk for hours at nauseum, sure. meant to be an impulse into the system, right? We, oh. If you're on this podcast or you decide to share this with somebody that needs, you can't do it for another human. It's, it's Fact. individual Fact. work. Um, and on that note, I, I want you to turn your focus because you're doing some coaching and you and I are in a lot of different, you know, chiropractic communities, but like you acknowledge, I mean, healing is healing, right? There's a spectrum in the healthcare and energy healing fields and just leadership in general. I want you to give a call to action or a special message from the heart to the people in positions of leading communities, be it chiropractic practices, acupuncture clinics, hospitals, medical communities, massage, like coaches, politicians, teachers, anyone who's in a position to influence community in this mm. space, what do you say to them to lead us forward? Mm. The organism cellularly down to the individual cell only advances with the level of perception and awareness that it has of all the other cells in the individual. Dr. Bruce Lipton, make it your, your, your obligation, your, your, I don't even have words for it, effort like your life depends on it in the spaces that you occupy to learn more about the people that you have the blessing, the blessing to come in contact with, to collaborate with, to lead, to influence, like effort to get to know the people around you as you can then appreciate what makes them tick, 
What is their purpose? What have they gone through? What are their unmet needs? So that way you can begin to have conversations and effort to communicate and listen. Listen and be able to hear things because people reveal to you what they're going through or what's the unmet need if you listen deep enough. And I imagine with any of these different leaders, the more we can effort to then bridge you know, relations and understanding and offerings of what people bring into the world versus what we're trying to just give them that that will free us into a third paradigm of understanding when we're able to have conversations that matter and be able to bridge the life experience that we've all have had to then usher us into a new expression. So whether that be on different quote unquote sides, it's not two freaking sides. It's one spectrum of, of, of understanding. And if you can meet someone, how they're at, but more important, Dr. Lance, why they're at, then that will help us into a new echelon of expression. Ah, there, <laughs> right there. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's so many nuggets. I'm excited. I, I love these opportunities because I get to listen back to them and feel all of it. And I think something that you and I have talked about before, you know, we're, you know what this is actually where what we're sharing is a one year anniversary ish of the playground in this conversation. And that was like the opening of the pores right before yeah. all of this opened up and started. Uh and I can think of a hundred conversations I've had with you and all of our friends through this, that it's like, we called out for change. We called out for transformation and to elevate to the next level of consciousness. So it's messy and it's uncomfortable and it doesn't need fixed. It's not broken. It is at, it is a healing process that we are all in. Um, so any, uh any, any words of wisdom to share with the listeners or ways that they can communicate with you if they want to learn more about your coaching or how to, you know, come get adjusted by you as you think now, right? Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Uh, well, if you want to connect and you resonate with anything or shoot, if you don't resonate, there we go. you have a challenge or you want to just come to me, yo, come to me, uh, feel free to hit me up on Instagram. It's at Dr. Jamal Fuster. Uh, I'm sure you figure out the spelling, D-A-D-R-J-A-M-A-L-F-R-U-S-D-R. Um, just as it sounds, hit me up on Facebook. Shoot, hit up Dev and get my cell phone and feel free to call me or text me um, if you are in that space to dive deeper. Just want to give that invitation. Uh, hit up the Source Oakland uh, Chiropractic Clinic as that's out in Oakland, California, as this is where I'm at for the next few weeks. And just be curious of your fellow human beings as we're all in it together. My final offering is that all, I think it was uh, Dr. Zach Bush as we got to listen to that podcast episode. And it's like 7.8 billion souls, souls chose to log in at this time in history, this unique opportunity. We could have been born at any point in history any, literally any point, but for some reason, we are all logging in now. And I invite you to discover why is it that you were brought on or chose to log on now? Mm. Bam. And I, I, I will make sure the link to that conversation, because if you don't know who Dr. Zach Bush is, he is on my dream list to host on this podcast and get to know that guy is tapped in and tuned into the future. So I love that that is where we will close this circle. And I am sure I will have you back for big ideas and um, many conversations to come. And yeah. I love you and I appreciate you. So thank you for being with me and thank you, whoever you are, wherever you are for spending this time with Dr. Jamal and myself. So now you know, and we'll see you soon.